Hello, so the past half year I've been reading almost exclusively like really good books So I want to share them with you in a little bit of a roundup of all the 23 books that I read in the past year and I'm gonna rank them from worst to best the way we always do on this channel. You know what's gonna happen Okay, I went to a thrift store yesterday and I found this beautiful Candle holder. I'm now one step closer to turning my room into that of an old lady. I recently started getting into puzzling so I am getting closer to that future. So the lowest tier, I'm gonna call it like not in my garden, not for me. The worst book that I read so far this year, I actually listened to the audiobook, it is Misfit by L. Kennedy. If you wanna see Riverdale personified into a book, you need to read this. But instead of the epic highs and lows of high school football, it's about the epic highs and lows of teenagers trying to bang but it's okay because they're they all just turned 18 they all just turned 18 so i can't say anything if you think hacking into a girl's computer to find out what she likes is cute and romantic then this book will definitely make you swoon you know you're reading a wild book when the most interesting and engaging storyline <laughs> is one about the student 18 years old <laughs> trying to fix a threesome with two of his teachers. It was so wrong on so many accounts, but genuinely that storyline carried the book. I think reading this book for me was kind of like watching reality TV where you're just like watching all this like toxic and dumb stuff going down, but it's still enjoyable because that's just why you watch it. And the second and only other book in my not in my garden tier it's gonna make some people sad i already know that i'm very sorry it is legends and lattes by travis baldry this beloved cozy fantasy about an orc star in a coffee shop was really heartwarming the first 100 pages but reading about fantasy creatures discovered the concept of iced coffee and cinnamon rolls got a little just tired for me pretty quickly the romance could have carried the story it's like really cute between this like orc lady and a succubus if it wasn't for the fact that the romance only develops in like the last 100 pages and therefore felt quite rushed you know the coco chanel rule of you should always like take off one piece of jewelry before you leave the house to get like the best outfit i feel like that should have happened with the characters in this book if we took out a little mouse or dwarf here then we would have more time to actually develop the orcs or the troubadours or so yeah i totally understand why so many people love this i think maybe if i was a coffee fanatic i would have appreciated this more but i don't drink coffee because it makes me dizzy also i just want to say here because i know i'm going to get comments about it yes i did try reading fourth wing the super popular fantasy romance with dragons that has like a 4.7 average goodreads rating i got 30 minutes into the audiobook and realized it wasn't for me it just really wasn't for me, so I didn't read it. I just want to take a little break to say that the past year I have been self-employed and sometimes I struggle with the fact that I don't really have anything to give me guidance on how to have a creative career. So I'm really excited to share that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that you may know as the place for classes on photography, film and illustration. But did you know Skillshare also has hundreds of career focused classes? Classes. I personally strayed off the traditional career path because traditional jobs just aren't a one-size-fits-all and Skillshare can help you also design a career that fits you. I want to expand my career by getting into writing but I'm terrified of it and I've really gotten a lot of help from Emma Gannon's class on building creative confidence where she goes into avoiding self-sabotage by overcoming your perfectionism and procrastination, two things I really struggle with. Skillshare is giving me the opportunity for greater control over my career and creative path. They have a lot of classes I'm really interested in on time management, creative writing, storytelling. You can also get started on reaching your career goals using Skillshare. The first 1000 people who click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So click that link to get one month free. 
The next tier I would call hits and misses. First, we have this short nonfiction book called Manipulation. I don't remember much about this book, which I know sounds like me trying to guess like you into thinking I read it when I didn't, but I, I really did read it. I don't remember anything and that's probably a really, really bad sign. I do remember that I thought it was interesting because she gives a lot of great real life examples and also makes you think about how you yourself might be inadvertently using these techniques to like subconsciously manipulate people and that sent me down a spiral of thinking oh my gosh am I manipulating all of my friends into like liking me am I like secretly manipulating everyone around me I remember the spiral, that's what I remember. Heroes and Villains by Angela Carter. Not often does it happen that I'm reading a book that I'm not like super into and think to myself, I wish this was longer. Let me explain. The book has a very interesting feminist concept of this young girl ruled by anger that starts living with this barbarian tribe. There's a lot of Bible symbolism. We get the signature Angela Carter cocktail of super succinct, accurate descriptions feminism and also very dark brutality um, but it's only 100 pages and that's just not enough to paint like a good picture of the characters in our world like we barrel through the scenes like someone is running away from their emotions instead of tackling them then i read a book called period power it's a non-fiction about living your life according to the ebbs and flows the highs and lows of the high school football, no. the ebbs and flows of your natural cycle. I have actually started implementing this into my own daily life, you know, just allowing myself to go goblin mode whenever I'm on my period. <laughs> and this book was genuinely helpful, but sometimes, you know, you're reading like a scientifically based book and you're like, oh, this is interesting. Oh yeah, I recognize this from my degree. And then boom, out of left field, pseudoscience. Just utter pseudoscience and it kind of made me think like I don't know how much I can trust the rest that she said so yeah genuinely helpful but read with caution we're already moving on into a positive tier because there were just a lot of great books this is the tier consider me entertained the demon in the wood by Lee Bardugo a villain origin story sign me up Except it's not really that. It's more of a one small event in the long line of events that will eventually lead to this character becoming the villain. But that just doesn't really roll off the tongue as nicely, you know? It's a story about the Darkling who is the villain in the Grisha trilogy. So to be fair, if you haven't read that, this will mean nothing to you. I would have liked the art style a lot more if it wasn't so stilted at times but we do get like a beautiful color scheme and you know aside from a good villain scheme i also love a good color scheme bitterthorn by ket dunn are you lonely do you feel like you don't fit in with your family do you have a crush on a hundred year old witch that lives in a tower too specific okay i will never say no to a good gothic romance even if it doesn't really have much to set itself apart from all the other gothic romances out there i will still be entertained i would have liked to see more personality from the castle because that's the thing that you can ask from a gothic romance it would be a weird thing to ask from any other genre like imagine reading a contemporary and being like well i would have liked to see a little bit more personality from that house that they're living in maybe also i would have liked to see some longer scenes between the witch and the main character that go beyond just and then we had breakfast and it was really nice but yeah castle in the woods beautiful love story I cannot ask for more. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. If you thought YA dystopians overused the capitalized noun thing, wait until you read this book. But it does it in a very good way. If you want to leave your dull life at extremely upper management, spending your days doing boring tasks and instead go to this little beach house where you're going to monitor magical children, Prepare to die from an overload of heartwarming and cutesy feelings and the confusion that will come when you find yourself loving the Antichrist and other odd characters. The only reason this book ended up not higher for me is because it tried to add like more emotional depth to the story by introducing this like discrimination plotline, but it doesn't really get much further than and then we defeated discrimination using the power of friendship. 
Divine Arrivals by Rebecca Ross. I could describe this book to you as a rivals to lover story set in fantasy England about these two young journalists that are in competition for like the same job at the Gazette that they work at. But it wouldn't accurately represent the tone and vibe of this book. Oh wow, this candle is, he is mutating. So although that description is technically correct, I would more say it is a heartwarming story about two young people pouring their hearts out in letters sent to each other through magical typewriters as they are the only ones with which they can truly share their feelings of family trouble and growing up in this time of war, trying their best to find and allow themselves to find joy in these dire times. And this romance book will make you want to cry. This book probably would have been higher on the list if I didn't listen to the audiobook because it's so focused on letters and writing. I'm sure it comes across better in actual text. The next category is called Nonfiction Slaps Stop Sleeping On It. If you would like some sense knocked into you by famous poet Rainer Maria Rilke, you should read Letters to a Young Poet. Imagine sending your idol a letter being like, hey, I'm really inspired by you, can you send me some advice? And it just starts this year-long correspondence where he sends you letters with his life advice for becoming like a creative and a poet. I would, I would decease. This book is for the creatives. Uh, I think if, if your dream in life is to become like an accountant, I don't think you're gonna get much out of his advice on how to find the right words for things or how to deal with lacks of inspiration. But if you are creative and you don't know what you're doing with your life and you are crushed by the uncertainty of it all, so A Room of One's Own was Virginia Woolf looking at the essay genre and thinking, hey, what if I made this also stream of consciousness? But once you're past the beginning of her walking through the streets, going to a dinner party, having some conversations with her friends, and she actually ends up getting to the point, that's where it gets very interesting. It's about how women don't have the right circumstances to slay in the world of literature and arts the way men can. It's a little bit outdated because of course nowadays we no longer see writing as this like men only something women can't do field. Although I don't, maybe some people still think that way. I don't know actually. But all the points that she makes can be extrapolated to today, you know? Instead of asking ourselves, what if Shakespeare had a sister? What problems would she face that Shakespeare didn't have to face? We can ask ourselves, what if, insert famous rocket scientist here, had a s sister? I don't know. I've been out of academia for a year and I already don't remember anything. Come as you are already wins for the great innuendo in the title. <laughs> if you are a woman, a cis woman, or a trans man, you should read this. And actually I think ev e any other people, I think everyone should just read this book. Basically this book is about sex and about the science from the female perspective. If you've ever thought to yourself, am I normal? Is this normal? Then you need to read this book. This book contains vital information. I have no jokes for it. I just think that anyone's lives will be changed if they read this. Also, the audiobook's really good and it contains a lot of rectified information as well. And then the second to last tier, you know, before we get to the top, is my favorite. I call it Fantasy to Fill the Void. Here I have um, The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, which is the last book in the Folk of the Air trilogy. You know Holly Black is a great author if she can make you root for and swoon over. <laughs> A romance that involves a stuck-up, drunk prince with a cow's tail. Now that's art. I think this last book wasn't as amazing as the first two books, but you know, like, shoot for the moon and you'll still land among the stars or something like that. Compared to the other two books, this one had a little bit less scheming and a little more warring. This series has just made me obsessed with Faye. The proof is in the fact that I made like a 40 minute video about it. <laughs> I even, I even bought elf ears, which didn't arrive in time for when I filmed the Faye video. But honestly, that's probably a good thing because they look kind of bad. They look low key bad. I look like a Hylian. I just need a master sword. Cute. 
<laughs> okay, moving on. Fantasy without Fay. We have The Adventures of Amina Al Sirafi, a pirate fantasy. This is a pirate fantasy. That's it. That's the tweet. So imagine Six of Crows, except the characters actually have the right age to fit their skill and experience level. Because all of the characters in this crew are like in their 50s or something. Is this book a little bit absurd and all over the place at some times? Yeah. Are a lot of characters introduced and then not properly given their moment? Yeah. Are there some things about the plot that are super convenient? Also, yeah. But I kind of just don't care. <laughs> you know, we have a badass pirate lady as our main character who's also incredibly funny, by the way. It's set in middle-aged Middle East. There's magic, there's a scary villain that invites the main character to rule the world with him. It's just up my alley. It's up my alley. I'm happy. Oh, the next one's another Holly Black, so a Faye one. I'm gonna make use of the fact that I bought these, okay? Like, I am gonna go to my first, like, fantasy fair this summer. I might wear them there. Just get the burns out. Ah, oh, I'm having fun with this, okay. The Stone Air by Holly Black. Holly Black looked at the young adult trope where the main character's like, I'm so ugly and no one's gonna look at me, and said, okay, but what if we made that actually real and she wrote a main character who's a monstrous fae with pointy teeth who lives feral in the woods because her parents discarded her and i gotta respect holly black for that with the stolen air holly black wrote a perfect take on the standard YA fantasy if you don't like it when characters spend the entire book just walking from place to place talking to this character talking to that character then you shouldn't read this book I, for one, really like journey stories like that, so I thought it was cool. And then, of course, we have to talk about Hellbent by Lieber Dugo. I need to take this off. Ninth House was the sequel to the Dark Academia ghost thriller Ninth House. Initially, I may have been a little harsh on Hellbent, but I think that's just because Lieber Dugo has set the standards for herself so high. But yeah, okay, maybe she kind of struggles with the characterization in this series. But we get these soul-altering descriptions of star-led journeys through a temple to hell. I have visuals of a ruined hellscape, streets of New Haven and like hot demons in the middle of a pentagram summoning circle scorched onto my retina forever because Lee Bardugo is just so good at vivid descriptions. She's a master of vibes and I like the dark academia hell vibes in this one. Okay, and that leads us to the last tier, the top tier, the cream of the crop. This is my top seven. At number seven, we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Saying I liked this book feels kind of wrong given the subject matter and it being about like mental health and asylums um, but it's just one of those books that you finish and then think i need a second to process this being in this main character's head is exhausting she is quite insufferable she's very negative she's very mean to others but then at the same time sometimes she says certain things or does certain things that are so funny and so insightful and you think wow this is really relatable and then you realize wait but i just i just decided that she's insufferable Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone ever starts talking to me about figs, I will cry. On number six, we have Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. Three witches living in a tower. What could go wrong? Well, um, we have uh, cannibalism, demons, abusive fathers, trauma. But none of it is for shock value. This is the story of a girl dealing with so much trauma and learning how to set boundaries. And sometimes those boundaries include demons and a lot of blood. Coming in at number five, we have The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. Who'd have thought that the book to get me out of a reading slump would have been a vampire romance? Sometimes the stars align and I am given a book 
with enemies to lovers, trials, bad as main characters, original world building, a magic system surrounding godlike powers. This book was written for me. This is described by the author as her angsty, stabby, spicy book, which perfectly describes what this is and is also exactly what I needed when I read this. At number four, we have The Very Secret Society of Ele... Ele... Ele the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Although they are tongue twisters, I really love books that have like quirky titles like this. I think I'm gonna rebrand my channel to uh, the Curious Coven of Highly Cozy Readers. This book is like The House in the Cerulean Sea or even like Legends and Lattes in the fact that it's like this cozy story about a witch going to raise these three witchy children in this beautiful house and then interjects this with this undercurrent of an actual deep storyline about learning how to accept yourself and learning that you are loved and finding a place where you truly belong and it actually almost made me cry so top three time on number three we have cultish i finished the audiobook for this non-fiction book about the language of cults in like almost one singular go <laughs> i just love cults I mean, I don't love them, but I'm like very fascinated by them. I also don't like sports. So this book that basically equates some sports with cults, I am bound to love it. <laughs> no, it actually just talks about how some non-cult things like Soul Cycle or CrossFit or MLMs are cults ish in the language that they use. It wasn't mega in-depth on the language department, but I was mostly just here for the cults. I'm- I love cults. I'm not in a cult, I swear. <laughs> Coming in at number two, we have Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope. I've never been a poetry person. I thought I wasn't made for it, even though I love it when things rhyme. <laughs> But her poems are so relatable. Sometimes they're relatable because you're like, oh, haha, yeah, that's so funny. And sometimes her poems are relatable in a way that make you go, oh, god, yeah, isn't that funny? It's the kind of poetry that makes you look at life and just laugh at the absurdity of it all and look at it with renewed appreciation. And then the best book that I read so far this year the title goes to The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshini Chokshi. This book genuinely felt like dreaming with how vivid and magical it was. Okay, so well, like last night I did dream that I was getting a hamster and then I accidentally also bought an opossum and I had to take care of both of them. And a lot of animals died. Okay. <laughs> So maybe this book isn't like a dream. This book made me want to look at art and learn about mythology and read fairy tales and uncover the secrets of the universe. Oh, Leonie, the book at the top of your list is yet again a book about a very obsessive relationship, about this very psychological, toxic interaction between these two characters. And what of it? I have, I am consistent. It, that's called consistency. I do want to bring your attention to the fact that so far this year I haven't given a single book five stars yet. So let me know what your favorite book of the year so far was. Um, and if you like talking about books with me, consider subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you here. As always, I want to thank my patrons with a very special shout out to all of the elite Hidden Library members and a warm welcome to our newest members, Karina Rodriguez and Michelle Lindley. This month we'll be reading The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. So if you want to join that, you can join the Patreon if you want to. That being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon with another video. Very soon. Goodbye.